In the rugged, mountainous terrain of China's Sichuan province, something new has taken to the skies. State media shows a machine lifting off the ground, not like a plane, but like a rocket, straight up, standing on its tail. Then, it gracefully tilts forward, flying with the speed of a fixed-wing aircraft. Officially, they're calling it a breakthrough for disaster response, a new tool for search and rescue that can reach places no normal aircraft could. It's a story of technology serving humanity. But what if that's not the whole story? What if its most important mission is the one they're not talking about? This, rescue drone, might just be a blueprint for a stealthy, autonomous weapon that could rewrite the rules of modern warfare. The very same tech that saves lives could be used to take them, silently and from a world away. Let's peel back the layers on the secret mission behind China's new tail sitter drone. On the surface, the story is compelling. China has officially shown off a new Vertical Takeoff and Landing, or VTOL, drone. Unlike the quadcopters we all know, this is a tail sitter. It launches with its nose to the sky, flies like a plane for its mission, and then lands vertically on its tail. No runway, no catapult, no complicated recovery gear needed. This alone is a huge deal for civilian use. Imagine rescue teams deploying this after an earthquake. It can take off from a tiny clearing, a busted up road, or the deck of a small boat. It flies faster and farther than a typical multirotor drone, giving a crucial, real-time view of a huge area. AVIC, the state-owned aviation giant behind it, says it's cheap to operate and easy to maintain, painting it as a practical tool for a complex world. But here's the detail that changes everything. The company that built it isn't some civilian tech startup, it's the Chengdu Aircraft Industry Group, or CAIG. This is the exact same defense contractor that builds China's J-20 stealth fighter and the Wing Long series of attack drones, China's direct answer to the American Predator and Reaper. And that forces you to ask a pretty obvious question. Why is a top-tier builder of military warplanes suddenly making a simple rescue drone? The answer is probably that it's not simple at all. And this is where things get really interesting. The very features that make this drone a great lifesaver also make it a terrifying military asset. That ability to work without a runway isn't just for disaster zones, it's critical in a war where airfields are the first things to get blown up. This isn't just a rescue drone, it feels like a blueprint for a new way of fighting. Let's break down its potential secret missions. First, persistent surveillance. Regular spy drones, like the American Reaper, have amazing endurance, but they have a weakness. They have to keep moving to stay in the air. That creates predictable flight paths an enemy can track. A tail sitter, though, could fly to a target area, flip back to vertical, and just hover. It could perch on a rooftop, sit silently in a forest, or just loiter for hours over a strategic choke point, becoming a nearly invisible, all-seeing eye. It's the drone version of a sniper, waiting for the perfect shot. Second, a precision attack platform. A machine this versatile, built by a military contractor like CAIG, wasn't just designed to carry cameras. With a wingspan of 2.6 meters, it's big enough to be armed. It's not a huge leap to picture this drone armed with small, precision-guided bombs. It could be launched from a small ship, fly deep into enemy territory, and take out a high-value target, a radar dish, a command post, an enemy leader, all without risking a pilot or a billion-dollar bomber. It could even be a loitering munition, a kamikaze drone, hovering over the battlefield until a target appears, then diving in for the kill. Third, and this is maybe the most alarming part, swarm warfare. During its public drill, officials showed off the drone's Wenyao intelligent control system. They demonstrated autonomous target allocation, automatic route planning, and automated threat avoidance. Those aren't features for a single rescue drone, those are the building blocks of an autonomous swarm. Now, don't just picture one of these things. Picture hundreds, launched from trucks, ships, and planes, all converging on a single target. Defending against that would be like trying to swat a cloud of angry hornets. Some drones are the eyes, identifying targets. Others jam enemy radar, and the rest are armed, ready to overwhelm even the most advanced air defenses with pure numbers. China has been very open about its ambitions in AI and drone swarming, and this cheap, runway-independent, and smart tail-sitter looks like the perfect platform for that vision. 
So, what does all this mean for the future of war and the global balance of power? A technology like this doesn't just add a new weapon to the playbook, it threatens to rewrite the rules, especially in the planet's most volatile hotspots. Think about the South China Sea. China has spent years building and fortifying artificial islands, but their airbases are fixed, obvious targets. A fleet of these tail-sitter drones changes that equation completely. They can be scattered across hundreds of tiny islands and ships, creating a resilient network of eyes and shooters that's almost impossible to take out in one hit. They could launch from the back of a truck on some remote rock or the deck of a Coast Guard ship, dramatically expanding the PLA's reach. This is all part of a bigger AI and drone arms race between Washington and Beijing. The US military is well aware of this. The Pentagon has launched its own replicator initiative, a program aimed at fielding thousands of cheap, autonomous drones to counter China's numerical advantage. And the US already has its own advanced BTOL drone, the MQ 35V Bat, which looks strikingly similar to this new Chinese model. But the difference might be in philosophy. The US has often focused on highly advanced, and therefore very expensive platforms. China, on the other hand, seems to be chasing mass. By creating a system that's mechanically simpler and cheaper, they could be setting themselves up to produce these drones on a scale the West might struggle to match. A recent Pentagon report noted that the PLA Air Force is rapidly matching US standards in UAVs, but the real fear isn't just that they're catching up technologically, it's that they could win by sheer numbers, making our superior tech irrelevant. China's new tail-sitter drone is a masterclass in dual-use technology. The official story, a rescue drone here to save lives, isn't necessarily a lie, but it's dangerously incomplete. The same design that makes it a hero in a flood makes it a menace in a fight. It's the convergence of VTOL flight, advanced AI, and swarm logic that could fundamentally change modern warfare. It blurs the lines, making it harder to tell a civilian tool from a military threat until it's too late. The question isn't if drones will be central to the next conflict, but how. This quiet rescue drone offers a chilling glimpse into one possible answer. A future where battlefields are dominated by smart, autonomous, and expendable machines. It leaves you with an ominous thought, is this the new face of warfare? A battlefield where the line between helping hand and hidden dagger is blurred beyond recognition, and where a silent observer can become a killer in the blink of an eye. If you want to stay ahead of the curve on the tech that's shaping our world, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And let us know in the comments, what do you think is the real purpose of this new generation of Chinese drones? Thanks for watching.